you guys want your streams to stick out amongst the millions of other streamers, you're gonna wanna check out these top five best OBS plugins. Let's get into it. What's up guys, Ryan B here. This is Ride Take Gaming, and in this video, we're talking about the five best plugins you can get for OBS Studio. Now for me, I have been on OBS Studio for quite a while and I've run through a whole lot of different plugins, but these are the five that I tend to use way more often on my streams that I really, really like. Now in fact, Plugins were one of the main reasons why I switched over from Streamlabs OBS into OBS Studio, amongst a few other reasons. If you guys want a full-on breakdown video of Streamlabs OBS versus OBS Studio, go ahead and click that card right there and it'll bring you to that video. Now, depending on the plugin, plugins can do a whole wide range of different effects for your stream, and these five are really, really useful. Now, if you guys hate this list or you like this list, make sure you hit a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on how you feel or you can flame me in the comment section down below. But if there's some plugins that you actually really like and think that should have been included in this list, let me know in the comment section down below, or you can hop into one of my live streams because I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, link in the description down below. We tend to hop into just chatting when we just start talking about streaming, gaming, gear, all that kind of stuff. So if you have any questions or you want to start a conversation, go ahead and hop in there. Now let's go ahead and get this list kicked off right now. So the first transition on this list is going to be the OBS Transition Override Matrix. And what this allows you to do is have full on customization for your transitions for each individual scene that you have set up. Now this is super helpful if you're anything like me and you have a whole bunch of scenes and you don't want your one stinger transition to be used for every single scene. And I know stinger transitions are super nice and they look really good, but if it's overplayed and it gets on the screen too much, then people are gonna get kind of annoyed with it. And that's where this plugin comes in handy. So with this, you can set up two different scenes. So let's say you have your main scene and then your AFK screen. And from here, you can set one specific transition to go only to your AFK screen. And then coming back from your AFK screen to your main scene, you can also have a different transition set for that as well. And you can do this for all the amount of different scenes that you have to have way more customization in your scenes. And for me, I have a bunch of different scenes set up to where they need specific transitions to that way they flow pretty well. And the only way to do that is with this plugin. And this is what it looks like here. So once you have the plugin downloaded, all you have to do is go into the tools section, click on the transition override matrix, and it'll bring up this window here. I'm gonna make it bigger so you guys can kind of see everything that I got going on with mine currently. And I'll open up the bottom side as well. So right here, I know it's not the prettiest thing, but it does function very well. So on the left side, so all the rows, you have the scenes that you're starting with. And on the top side, so the columns, these are all the scenes that you're switching to. So you're switching from the left side into the top side. So from main, and you wanna switch over into news, then you find where it intersects right there, and then you can change the transition that I currently have set to news at 870 milliseconds. You can right click it, and then go to the drop down menu and kind of adjust which transition you want it to set to, but this, I want news, to, so I'm not gonna change it. Now you can also set any if you want, anytime you switch to and from that specific scene, you want that one transition to play, which I have for the news set setting. So anytime I transition from any scene to news, then it's gonna use the news transition. Same thing with my full EOS and full reaction. I have them both set to the matrix at different timings. So anytime I switch to those two scenes, it's gonna give me the matrix transition. Now, if it says none, it's really just meaning the default. So you can kind of see that I have the stinger set as my default transition, which would normally be for everything. So anytime you see none here, it's actually just referring to the default transition, which again, for me is my stinger. So if we go to scene two, and then we go over to full reaction, you can see where it intersects. And right now it's set to the none, which is the default. Same thing with intermission two screen. If you wanna switch over to main, again, it's set to default. So you can kind of see where they intersect and that's the transition you have set up. If you wanna kind of see it in action, if I go from the intermission to the main, you can see the default stinger transition that I have set. And then from main, if I switch over into my news scene, you can see the news transition. And then back to main, again, the news transition. So moving on over into plugin number two, we're looking at the Move Transition plugin. So this is another transition plugin, but this does two very, very unique effects for your stream. The first one being you can add a new transition called the Move Transition, which gives you a much more fluid animation between the two scenes. And it looks something like this. So for this here, I have two different scenes set up that are very similar. One is just a more enlarged version of my main gaming scene. And then of course I have my main gaming scene. So when I do any sort of reactions or I get a cool kill or something like that, I can hit a button to switch the scenes and it gives that more fluid effect to it. And the second thing you can do with the move transition plugin is you can now animate individual sources within each scene. So let's say I didn't want to set up two different scenes for that effect. I can do that all within one scene and you can animate individual sources. Or say I want to take my webcam border, put it up to the left of the screen or to the right, move it all around or spin it in circles, really whatever you want to do, you can now set that up with this move transition plugin. So it really opens the gates to any sort of creativity. So I encourage you guys to get this, play with it and see what you can come up with. So plugin number three is going to be the Spectralizer plugin, which adds a audio visualizer for your streams. Really good if you're using any sort of background music for your streams. And if you're not familiar, 
What I use this for is Spotify while I'm playing Ri-Fi, which is my royalty-free DMCA-free playlist that I created for you guys to play on your streams and your YouTube videos on any platform that you want. Links for all those playlists in the description down below. So on stream, this is what it looks like. You have full customization of the colors, how thick the bars are, how many bars you have, and the fall off and all that. So it just gives a really cool, unique effect, especially if you're playing any sort of background music, but you can attach this to any audio source that you want. So if you want it just for your mic, if you want it for your background music, if you want it for your game audio, for really any audio source that you want it to, you can attach it to that and have it there. So plugin number four is going to be the VST Reaper audio plugins, which give you way more audio control over any of your audio sources and really sets your audio to a whole nother level. Now, I think this plugin is pretty much for everybody that's using any sort of audio, which if you're streaming, you should be. Obviously, people want to hear your voice and they don't want to listen to you if you sound like you're talking through a tin can. So with the Reaper plugins, you have full on compressors that you can change. You have band compressors to change individual levels and audio frequencies. You have delays you can change, full on equalizers, dynamics processing, noise gate setups, which are super helpful because most people have too much background noise that they really need to get rid of and that noise gate will help you. But really VST plugins just give you way more control with your audio and audio is super, super important when it comes to any sort of broadcasting. So get in there, mess around with it, learn a lot about your audio and how to fix it, how to make it sound better for your voice. It'll definitely pay off. And all right guys, before we make it to the final plug in on this list. Make sure you guys do the YouTube stuff. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike the video. Comment down below why you like the video or if you think I missed something, let me know in the comment section down below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now if you guys want to see any of these plugins live or if you want to talk about any sort of streaming, gaming gear, ask any questions or anything like that, I do stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Link in the description down below. So go ahead and hop in there and let's have a conversation. Now kicking off the final plugin, which is probably the most important plugin on this list is going to be Stream FX. Now with this plugin, you have full on creativity to do a whole lot of different extras onto your stream, which is definitely going to set you apart from the millions of other people on the platform. This plugin has a robust feature set that allows you to do many, many different things. Let's go ahead and pull this up on the screen here and you guys can see a list of the features that it has. So we're looking at stuff like a 3D transform feature, which allows you to transform any source or scene in a 3D field. You have a blur filter, which adds a blur to any source. You got color grading, you got displacement map filters, dynamic mask filters, NVIDIA face tracking, which is a super cool effect that I really like to use. You have SDS effects, which adds inner and outer glows to any source or scene. You have different shaders that you can download extra ones and it does come with a few here. And lastly, you have a source mirror, which creates a mirror of any source without any overhead, which isn't gonna tax your system any extra. And you can add filters to both or singular to each one of those sources with the mirror effect. They do give you some more encoder effects as well for different settings for different encoders. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of creative different effects and things you can add to your stream with this plugin. And one of my favorites is the 3D transform effect. A lot of people like to use this with a chat window and give like a 3D effect to their on-screen chat. However, if you wanna be a little bit different, you can use this for any scene. For me specifically, I have this bar scene right here set up that as you can see with a normal setup without a 3D transform, it does look a little off because the perspective is different. However, with a 3D transform, I can go in and actually adjust the transform and adjust just the angle of the screen itself and the webcam to make it fit the scene a whole lot better. So it looks a lot more clean and a lot more fluid with this scene. So as you can see with this plugin, you can get really creative with your streams and it definitely helps to set you apart. So that is my list. That is all five of the plugins. I'll have links for all of them in the description down below guys. And of course, make sure you hit some relevant content all right here.